This is a Kennedy class 3 patient and a maxillary arch. We're going to design a partial denture for this patient. Let's look at this cast and think about some of our rules for Kennedy class 3 and how we're thinking about this case. And we're going to look for a design that provides stability and retention for this partial. So we have a fulcrum line up here at this part of the cast and when the patient bites down that partial denture is going to want to flip up in the back when the patient eats sticky foods it's going to want to pop up in the front so in order to prevent that we're going to think about clasp next to or near that edentulous area whichever is aesthetically and functionally the best now aesthetically Canines are pretty obvious in the patient's arch when someone smiles. So we would like to avoid putting clasping assemblies on those canines for aesthetic reasons. So we would think about moving back to our first premolars, which would be a little bit more aesthetic, and it would still take care of that action of trying to dislodge in this anterior area. Now when that patient bites down, we have another fulcrum line here that that partial might want to flip up in the back. So consequently, if we can place um, a clasp assembly far away from that edentulous area up front, then we would prevent those uh, movements from taking place. In the Kennedy class 3, we tend to put a direct retainer next to our, the tooth next to our edentulous areas. So we're thinking, oh, do we want to come here, here, and then separate retention as much and go back here? And ideally, from an aesthetic standpoint, we're going to try and see whether we have an undercut when we survey this cast right here on the mesiofacial of our premolar and the distofacial of our molar. On the other side, we're going to try and balance that off if possible. So we'll look for a mesiofacial undercut on our first premolar and a distofacial undercut on our second molar. And we really need just two per side. On the Kennedy class three, we tend to clasp next to the edentulous area, so we're going to be thinking here and here. Now, in addition, we have the rule that we will need a rest next to or near each edentulous area, same as that Kennedy class 4. So because we have this edentulous area in the front, we're going to plan on placing a, a, a rest on the two canines regardless of whether we're going to clasp them. And those two rests are going to be cingulum rests on a maxillary canine. Now we did a Kennedy class 4 that had a disto incisal angle rest because on the mandibular canine there's very little cingulum or very little thickness of enamel in that area of the cingulums. But on the maxillary canines we don't want to do a distal incisal angle rest because it would not be very aesthetic when the patient smiled and you were looking at them from the side. So on the maxillary canines, because we have nice thick enamel and a natural cingulum on these teeth, we will place cingulum rest on our canines. We will also have a clasp assembly then on this first premolar if we have the undercuts and this molar. We will need a rest next to our edentulous area and we would need one anyway though if we're going to have a clasp assembly here every clasp assembly must have a direct retainer a reciprocal component and a rest and a, 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 a um, minor connector coming up in to get to that rest same way on the molar every clasp assembly must have a direct retainer a reciprocal component and a rest and a minor connector bringing the metal up to that rest. On the other side, we're just going to balance it. 
So we're going to have a direct retainer on our first premolar if we have retention, and we're going to have a direct retainer and clasp assembly on this second molar, and it balances it out very nicely. One additional thing to keep in mind is that for this Kennedy Class 3, we can use rigid clasping. So our clasp of choice will be the cast circumferential on these two uh, abutments. We can use other clasping. Sometimes we might use an eye bar or something like that for aesthetics in that area. But the choice is usually the, the cast circumferential. When we bring this arm through this area over here, we also have to remember that we will be doing an embrasure rest so as to protect the tooth from that or the patient from feeling like that clasp arm is wedging between the teeth when this tooth is depressed. If we have a, a, an embrasure rest, both teeth will be depressed at the same time and that arm will not feel like it's a toothpick being driven between those two teeth. As far as a major connector is concerned, we're probably going to be doing the anterior posterior palatal strap on this particular patient. Now let's say we had all these had teeth up here, then we might be thinking of a real simple palatal strap across this midsection. But because we have teeth missing up here and we have to bring the metal up to that anterior portion, we will probably try to do anterior posterior palatal strap and place a big hole in the middle of it. So let's think about this. We've followed some of the rules for our Kennedy Class 3. We've looked at preventing rotation around these areas. Now we really will have no rotation on a to supported partial denture, but you have to think about the forces and where the best placement of the uh, clasp assemblies for a Kennedy Class 3. So let's look and see whether we have them on our surveyor.